Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Suraj in Cloud. In previous episodes, uh, we have seen how we can set up the IAM based authentication in AWS EKS cluster. Uh, and in previous couple of episodes, we have seen we have been interacting to the uh, cluster and I have shown a command with which you can populate the kubeconfig but uh, I haven't really discussed more about it uh, so in this episode we are going to look into the kubeconfig file uh, how to generate and how it works how it interacts with the how uh, your kubectl uses uh, your kubeconfig and how it does the authentication we'll look into that today right let's quickly dive into it <clears throat> so i have uh, my user which i'm using right i don't have kubeconfig yet because let's say if i do kubectl get ns it won't show anything right <clears throat> As I showed, there is this command called AWS EKS update kubeconfig. Then you have to give region. Uh, my region is London, which is EUS2, and the cluster name. Uh, let's see, hyphen h, what it says. Okay, hyphen hyphen name, not the cluster. I thought it is the cluster. Okay, name is Suraj in cloud hyphen one. Now, if I do this, what it it will do is it will add my kubeconfig to the kubeconfig path, which is dot cube slash config, right? <clears throat> it added a new context. <clears throat> now we can see that. Let's say dot cube config you can see it is added now i don't have any other context so it will just show this one on other note what you can do is you can do dry run as uh, add a dry run flag so it will print on your std out and then <clears throat> what we will do is we will add it to the file so that we can inspect it nice so we have the file let's export that file perfect <clears throat> now i can access the cluster right with the help of that cube config now as i said let's look at this cube config file what are the contents <clears throat> so uh, no need to worry about the C authority and the other stuff it is showing because uh, I always <coughs> delete my cluster after I do this session so that's perfectly fine so in this example <coughs> like typical kubeconfig the one of the section is clusters which is the list of cluster now it can have your other cluster as well so <coughs> which holds the information about your CS certificate uh, and the endpoint of your EKS. <clears throat> EKS endpoint is always like a random shard dot uh, region dot EKS dot. Oh, what happened there? <clears throat> yeah, uh, random shard dot EKS dot Amazon AWS dot com. Then the next section is context, in which again it is like which cluster it is now this name comes from here what user it is uh, which we will see later and the name of the context it's all same right this is the current context like which is now we don't have any other context right so it will be the same <clears throat> uh, the kind is config as we know now the most interesting bit which this video is focusing we are going to focus is this user <clears throat> right kubeconfig holds all the information like which cluster it is what it is but the key thing is like how it is going to authenticate right like there are various ways to authenticate based on certificate based on token based on some sort of plugin now in our case 
if we look we are using a plugin so we can you can see under user there is this exec um, what's happening here <coughs> yeah exec and api version client authentication we on alpha one so on kubernetes uh, documentation if you see there are various ways to authenticate one of them is like client go credential plugin and some sort of plugin so this is one of it now if we look further what's it doing is there are some arguments <clears throat> my region which is us2 eks get token cluster name it looks similar to the command we ran and the command is aws so basically what it's doing is aws eks get token cluster name and region so it is running this command okay so let's run this command ourselves and see what it what it is returning okay so it was aws eks get token region us2 and cluster was it cluster name yeah it was a cluster name yeah okay cool <clears throat> aws eks get token region eu west 2 cluster name is <clears throat> surajin cloud hyphen 1 okay it returned something now with the help of jq let's see it in a pretty way okay so that command which we saw in the kubeconfig plugin thing it returned a json which is a object of kind exec credential right uh, the same api version that we saw <clears throat> there's nothing in spec but in status there is a token kts aws v1 and some base 64 encoded string right now what happening here is whenever you run kubectl get command right let's say if i am doing kubectl get ns right what's happening is kubectl is reading kubeconfig looking for credential and then it executes that command which we did here manually right and it returns this token now in this command we printed this object on std out but when you do let's say kubectl get ns that command executes and output of that command gets passed to the next stage right so whenever i am doing kubectl get ns it reads it it uh, creates this token then it passes that request to api server so there is some sort of webhook and authenticator which authenticates that request and then it passed to api server to do the further operation such as in my case it was kubectl get ns or like creation of pod or whatever so basically before api server there is one authentication layer setting which is validating the stuff and authenticating right now let's do one thing uh what i in this command will add v8 and let's see if we can see anything okay all we can see is config loaded right which means that kube config loaded it saw that uh, particular thing and then based on that it made api call right so before making api call it did run that command so <clears throat> let's see if we increase the verbosity if we can see that thing okay can we see something here no okay we cannot really see that i guess so let's try 10 and then that's fine so. uh, can we see something no 
it's not showing that okay that's fine so we understood what it is doing right now as i mentioned this is a base 64 right encoded string now let's decode that string and see what in what's in it right so let's copy this hash let's paste it here and base 64 hyphen d okay now if we see here okay oh, oh no okay now if we see here it is a pre-signed url which is going to sts endpoint right and it is doing an action get caller identity right uh, and <clears throat> few different headers okay so what we understand here is whenever <clears throat> kubectl is getting this information passing to api server and that authenticator layer which is setting i'm using very abstract terms here there can be something else but just for the better understanding i'm saying there's some authenticating layer which is setting it is taking that this information and it is making a get caller identity api call to the sts endpoint right now on the start of this video i showed you aws sts get caller identity right <clears throat> this api call now this api call and the api call which we saw in the decoded string is exactly the same and what it does is it uses the <clears throat> credentials that i have in the environment uh, in this particular case the credentials are in the string itself it uses that and it talks to the sts endpoint with the api call get caller identity and then that particular service respond with this kind of information saying the entity which you are trying to authenticate is valid right so because aws sts get caller identity call worked for me similarly this will also work will work and that's why i am getting uh, all this responses back without any hassle right it is not stopping me anywhere because it is valid now let's go back to this command and see what's happening now we must be thinking whenever we <clears throat> run kubectl command does it does it run every time so it doesn't do every time the lifetime of this token is 15 minutes right so once i did uh once i did kubectl get ns it was first time the there is a already some sort of token generated and lifetime of that is 15 minutes so for next 15 minutes, if I run kubectl command, it will use the same token. And then after 15 minutes, it will automatically uh, request new token and uses that token for authentication, right? Now, <clears throat> with kubectl and the, how the plugin is implemented, it has automatically been taken care of. User don't need to worry about it, right? So this is how uh, the cube config for Amazon EKS cluster looks like and how it does the authenticate. Now some user must be using a project called AWS IAM Authenticator instead of AWS EKS get token. Now <clears throat> with AWS IAM Authenticator, this project was initially started by Heptio to facilitate this particular uh, feature but in recent version of aws cli they have added this eks get token with which you can do the same action so now with that aws iam authenticator is not necessary 
in your workflow but rather it's an alternative so based on your requirement either you can use aws eks get token or you can use aws on authenticator based on your convenience right so this is how uh, we saw how to generate kube config uh, whether to append in your existing kube config or generate a separate kube config and how the user section looks like how it utilizes <clears throat> your arm credentials to make the sts api call and pass it on the information and how kube will handle it nicely so yeah that was more about demystifying the kube config file if you like this video uh, do give us the like and share the video and do subscribe the channel as well and if you have any suggestion to uh, cover any topic regarding eks do let us know in the comment section uh, till then bye bye